Hello, students. This is Garomad Abba, and we have the physics tutorial lesson. Let's see the second tutorial lesson for today. The topic for today is measurement scales. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to define what is the scale and what is measurement. The second one, you are expected to list the four types of measurement scales. And finally, I expect you to distinguish between the four types of measurement scales. Now, let's come to the first. What is the meaning of scale, students? Scales are the set of numbers or the amount which are used to compare the level of something. And we have what we call data. What is the word data? Data is the collection of factors such as values and the measurement. As you remember, physics is the science of measurement. So when you go to the laboratory, you are going to measure something, the magnitude or the physical quantity of something. Then during that, you are going to record the, the data. That is what we call the value of that data. OK, again, we have measurement. And we have to know those words also. The process of assigning numbers to the characteristics of an object according to the set of rules. We have to have something to measure with, and then measurement or measuring in the process. And when we are going to carry on this process, we are assigning the numbers according to the set of rules or data. OK, but why do we bother about this all? You see, if our scales are wrong, if our data is not correct, then what we do or what we analyze and what we conclude at the end of our work will be mistaken, or it will give us the wrong information. So we have to have the reliable data, and we have to use the appropriate measuring instruments for this also. Then if our data, our conclusion is meaningless, now we are misleading every human society, which benefit from physics or from other science also. Now, let's go to the measurement of data in statistics. You know, we have in a survey two main categories of data. One is the categorical data, and the other is the numerical data. We can apply this concept in every aspect which deals with data in statistics. Now, what is the meaning of categorical data? OK, the categorical data are data that reflect the qualitative characteristics. When we say it is qualitative, we do not use numbers while we are dealing with this. It is essentially assigning the number values to inherently qualitative data. When we assign the number, we are not having the intention of quantifying it, but we assign for the purpose of just identifying and making appropriate for the analysis. These are the categorical data. Again, what are the examples? If we take gender or color, ethnicity, and individual preferences, these are some of the examples of the categorical data. If you take a gender, you cannot use numbers to make male or to represent male or females in a quantitative way. But for the purpose of assigning, you can, make, you can use numbers two for females and so on. Or you can use another uh, label also for that. If you want to refer to the colors, 
we have different colors, then there is no need of quantifying. When you want to say red, blue, or orange, or white, and so on, just you can simply assign the number, but not for the purpose of quantitative. We are dealing with the qualitative, but we can assign numbers to make the analysis convenient. Okay, again we have the individual preferences. For example, if we take the, the tea or the coffee preferences of individuals, just we can assign numbers. Those who prefer coffee, we can assign one number, and those who are not preferring coffee or tea, we can assign another different number. This means we are referring to something qualitative than quantitative. But in the case of numerical data, as the name indicates, it is the data that naturally is based on numbers. And it is quantitative in nature, and that are naturally measured as numbers. When we measure the magnitude of something, it may be the length or the height or the weight of something, we, from the very beginning, need numbers to represent those magnitudes. But if we look at the gender or the color or ethnicity and so on, we need no numbers here. Now, what are the examples? Age, height, and the weight are naturally measured by using numbers. If you want to tell your age to your colleague, then you have to use a number and you have to just mention the magnitude. The height and the weight, they are similar also. They are number-based. Such type of data are called numerical data. So basically, under each of them, under the categorical and the numerical data, we have two under each of them. So uh, totally, we have four types of measurement scales. Now let's see them one by one. The first, in under categorical data, let's see the nominal scale. As we said, the nominal scale is one of the types of the categorical data, which is qualitative in nature. In the, when we are referring to nominal data, the characteristics that we are going to study will not matter. The order is not the basic issue. And there is no quantitative difference between the categories. Example, if you, we take those examples, colors, levels, gender, you can just make the color order. You can start by red, by green, by blue, and so on. So we have to know as a student, the no, in the case of nominal scale, the order doesn't matter. Okay, let's see the second categorical data, which is an ordinal scale or an ordinal data. Opposite to that of the nominal scale, in this case, we need the order. The rank is important because as the name indicates, it is ordinal data which requires an order. For example, if we are referring to the race, who stood first? Who is the second? Who is the third and so on? The order matters here. We have to know the characteristics here. The difference cannot be measured. What does this mean? If we have the first, the second, and the third, we cannot exactly measure the distance between the first and the second, the second and the third, and so on. So, one of the characteristics of the ordinal scale is that although it is an ordinal or ranking, but the difference cannot be computed. Okay, uh, now let's see the second category, which is the numerical data. In the case of numerical data, you see we have the interval scale and the ratio scale. Okay, what is the interval scale? The interval, as the name indicates, uh, is ranking again because we are referring to the interval or the range. And the difference can be measured. 
because there is an interval from some number to the other number and so on, it continues like that, we can measure the difference. But we have to know that there is no true value or zero is not the true starting point for the interval data. When we look at the four mathematical operations, plus and minus, multiplication and division, the interval is kill undergo plus and minus, but not multiplication and division. For example, if you look at the temperature in degree Fahrenheit or in degree Celsius, you can take the difference between two temperatures in Celsius or in Fahrenheit. You can add degree centigrade and degree Fahrenheit. You can add the degree centigrade to each other according to their units and the degree Fahrenheit also. But practically, multiplying or dividing will give us no meaningful uh, physical quantity. So, in the interval scale, we cannot use multiplication and a division for our data, but we can add and we can subtract them from each other. We also said that the interval scale has no true starting point. That means zero is not the true starting point. Students, do you know why we say this? If we take the temperature of the body to be zero degree centigrade, zero seems the starting point. But it doesn't mean that the temperature is really or actually true, because the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. When we refer to the Kelvin scale, we can use that zero is the true starting point. But for degree Fahrenheit and for degree Celsius, zero is not the true starting point. Therefore, for the interval scale, we can say that uh, zero is not the true starting point. The last and the fourth, or the second for the numerical data is the ratio scale. Okay, what is the ratio scale? Except the nominal, all the three are ranking orders. The differences can be measured. You see, for the interval scale, we can measure the difference, whether it is a ratio or the interval, we can take the difference. For the ordinal, we cannot determine or compute the difference. In the case of nominal, you remember, the order even doesn't matter. Then, in the ratio scale, we have the true starting point, zero. In this case, we can use an example of uh, the zero Kelvin. Although it is not yet registered or recorded, zero degree Kelvin is actually the true starting point for that temperature. It is only the ratio scale that undergo the four operations, addition, subtraction, division, and the multiplication. Remember, in the interval scale, we can add, we can subtract, but we can't multiply and we can't divide, we can't take the ratio. But in the ratio scale, all are possible. What are the examples for the ratio scales? If we take the length, if we take the weight, if we take the temperature which is in Kelvin, there can be examples for the ratio scale. Okay, nominal scale data. Let's take an example to, to have the understanding of each of them, it is better to see them in examples. Assume we are making a survey of 10 individuals regarding the color preference. And we want to analyze the red, the blue, and the green preferences of individuals of 10 participants. When we are collecting data, let's say five of them preferred red, three of them blue, and the rest to green. You see now, as we have said, in the nominal scale, the order doesn't matter, we said. So you can take the red to the last, 
or you can rearrange their position or their order. Then, is it possible to make uh, this quantifiable, to make percentages or to have the frequency of each of them? We can assign them a number. Now, let's say out of 10, if five of them preferred red, how much percent is this from the total? Exactly, it is half. Out of 10, that means 50%. And 3, 30%, and the green is 20%. This is the way that we can use numbers to assign, but we are not quantifying, but we are categorizing using numbers. Okay. Now, the order of the colors, as I said, it doesn't matter. You can rearrange the orders or you can take in any order. It will not affect your data. It will not affect your finding at the end. This is the way the nominal scale data can be used in calculations. Still, it is qualitative, but we use the numbers and we use calculations. The nominal level data are useful for assessing differences between groups. You see students, we have the color preferences here. If you wanted to find the color preferences between red, green and the blue, you can assign numbers in such a way and you can deal with the differences between each of them. Okay, this is how we use the nominal data in calculations. Okay, the second one is the ordinal scale data. As I said, in the case of ordinal scale, the order matters. But remember students, we cannot compute the difference between each of them. We have the orders, but the difference cannot be computed because it is not convenient and it's not constant throughout. Now let's consider a race. If the time taken by the first runner to reach its destination or final point is 4.53 hours, and the second 4.55, and the third one is at the indicated time, now we can rank accordingly. But if you look at the difference between the first and the second, the second and the third, they are not similar. Therefore, we cannot compute the difference between these orders. You see, the difference between the first and the second is not the same as the difference between the second and the third place. Okay, this is the reason why we said uh, for the ordinary scale data, the difference cannot be computed. Now let's assume we have another example and we are taking the experience of people. And when we rank these experiences, we might use those expressions such as excellent, good, satisfactory, and so on. You can use also another. Okay, you can assign the number. They are not quantitative data. They are qualitative, but to identify between those degrees, you can assign them a number. For example, if you assign excellent, number one, very good, number two, and for satisfactory, number three, then you can find how many of those experiences are excellent and how many of them are very good, good, or satisfactory. In this case, the numbers are used to compute or to assess the difference between the groups or the characteristics that we are uh, going to study. The difference between these scales cannot be measured. Really, do we know the difference between excellent and good? How are they far apart from each other? Basically, we cannot compute, but we can rank them. This is the reason why we said it is an ordinal scale data. Now let's proceed again. We have the interval scale data. There are four types of scales, as we said, 
This interval is clearly the third. Example, consider the records of a temperature. We can take the record of the temperature and let's consider the unit is in Fahrenheit. We recorded 30 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Fahrenheit, and 90 degree Fahrenheit. Dear students, can't you add or subtract those temperature scales from each other? Can't we add them together? We can add, we can subtract from each other. We can take the difference. You see, the difference in temperature between each of them can be measured because it's obvious the difference between 60 degree Fahrenheit and 30 degree Fahrenheit is no. The difference between 90 degree Fahrenheit and 30 degree Fahrenheit is no. That is possible. So the difference can be computed. But we have to know that 0 degree Fahrenheit is not the lowest temperature. This is the reason why we said that for the interval scale data, zero is not the true starting point. But if the temperature is in Kelvin, it should go to the ratio scale. Okay, now the interval scale data has arbitrary zero point. The zero point is arbitrary but it is not the true starting point. Finally, let's consider again uh, the one type of numerical data, which is the ratio scale data. Now, let's consider your scores, students. The scores of students is an example of the ratio scale. It is not ordinal, it is not nominal or another. Okay, the best category of students' score is the ratio scale. Let's consider the scores are displayed on the board. They are 70, 30, 56, 82, and 90. Now, to arrange this, we, need, we have to go in the ascending order. Because zero can be the score, 30, 56, 70, 82, 90, and so on, can be scored in different assessments. Now, let's take, there is no score less than zero. A student cannot achieve a mark which is less than zero. Therefore, zero is the true starting point in the ratio scale. A student cannot achieve negative, actually. Okay, can we take the difference between the scores of the students? Yes, mathematically, you can take the difference between each of the scales. You can take the difference between 56 and 30. We can take the difference between 70 and 56, and then you obtain again another uh, figure which can also be the ratio scale. Okay, so the difference between the ratio scale can be measured. We can add the ratio scale, we can subtract the ratio scale from each other, even we can multiply and we can take the quotient of each of the scales also, each of the scores. For example, we have a score of 90 and we have a score of 30. Can we take the ratio? Yes. If you divide 90 by 30, you will have another number. But what does it mean? Based upon your intention, you can find or you can give the meaning to what this quotient represents. In this case, we can have this message. The student with the score of 90 has three times higher than that of the student with the score of 30. Based upon your purpose uh, of your data, you can attach the meaning for the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of each of the ratio scales. 
So the four mathematical operations uh, are valid or obeyed in the ratio scale. What are the key concepts? Here, in physics, a scale is the set of numbers, amounts, etc., which are used to measure or compare the level of something. When we want to measure something, we have to use the scale for measuring, and we have to assign the number to represent the magnitude or the amount if it is quantifiable using numbers. Students, we are just on the third one. Even though the ratio scale has the true zero point, it says the nature of the variable is such that the value of zero will never be observed. What does this mean? For example, we have said the, in the Kelvin scale, zero Kelvin is really the true starting point for that measurement scale. But yet, no zero Kelvin has been recorded. It is, this means that no such nature is observed. Okay, now let's summarize the main points under the measurement scales. Because it is new in physics, which starts in gray nine, we have to have the basic concept starting from the scratch here. Okay, we said the categorical data and the numerical data are there. Then under the categorical data, we have the nominal scale and we have the ordinal scale. And just in the numerical data, we have the interval and we have the ratio scales. Okay, in the case of nominal scale, as we said, now we are summarizing, there is no need of ranking the data. But in the case of the ordinal, we said it is important to have them in rank. What are the examples for the nominal data? We have the ethnicity, we have the color, we have the preferences, and we have also another which can be simply assigned by the number and the difference can be assessed by using those numbers in a qualitative way. In the case of the categorical data, we have the natural order or the natural rank because the name by itself indicates it is ordinal. It is in order, so we have the first, the second, and so on. Okay. What are the examples? If you are asked to give the examples of ordinal data, you can just use the level of agreement. What does it mean? If you are collecting a data uh, on the level of agreement of individuals, you can use a strongly agree, agree, or you can use disagree and strongly disagree. Uh, characteristics or level of scales. So when you want to indicate those types of characteristics on your participants, the type of data that you are using is an ordinal data. If you want to assess the level of income, then you can say the middle income and the high income country. If you are going to measure the level of satisfaction, high, low, or excellent, good, and so on, uh, you can use those indicators. And while you are using those indicators, you have to know that you are using the ordinal data. When you are using different softwares to analyze your data, it will ask you what type of data you have. For that case, you have to be in position to tell and to know the type of data you are using. Okay, the next one is the numerical data, and we have the interval scale and the ratio scale. Okay, let's see what is the interval scale. The interval scale is measurable, but has an arbitrary zero. 
we have we said that zero is not this, the true starting point, but we can use zero there. Using zero means that it is not uh, the true starting point. If you take the interval scale data, as the name indicates, because it is in interval, it is equally spaced from each other, or there are equal distances between each of the data in the, if your data is the interval data or if it is the interval scale. Okay, you can take the examples as we have seen. If you have a scores, if you have the temperature, then you can use the interval scale data. Uh, another is the ratio scale data. It is measurable. And remember again, in the interval scale data, you can take the difference and you can also take the sum. But we said there is no need of multiplying or taking the ratio in the interval scale. But in the ratio scale, all mathematical operations are possible. And the ratio scales are measurable and they have the absolute zero or they have the true starting point of zero. Okay, similar to that of the interval scale, the ratio scales are at equal distances from each other. Or if you consider each of the points, then you have equal distances from each. What are the examples? If you want to take the weight of an object, if you are in the laboratory, you can measure the height of an object, the height of the block, or the height of different materials to develop your measurement skills. And if you take the edge, you use numbers to describe the edge or to tell the magnitude of the edge. And if we take the temperature, if it is in Kelvin, then it is what we call the ratio scale. The duration of time. You see, if you take the duration in time and the type of data that you use is the ratio scale data. You see, these are the basic uh, points or the basic uh, ideas that we have to know related to the measurement scales. When you go further, you may have the details of those, but uh, at the high school level, in the physics course, these points are uh, enough if we understand them very well in the way they are presented. Dear students, by this, we are coming to the end of our lesson today. Goodbye.